in this lecture we'll discuss uh, what a linear system is what a time invariant system is and as we go further in this series of lectures we will be handling linear time invariant and linear time varying systems as well and we'll see some properties that are associated with these systems and how to analyze with the they satisfy certain properties or not so linear systems to consider a system whose input is some external signal let's say u and the output is y and to start with the initial condition is let's say x of t0 basically x at t equal to t0 time t equal to t0 okay so let's say this is what the system is so u is the input y is the output and x of t0 basically at t equal to t0 this is the uh, condition of the system this is what is the state at which the system is okay we call this at initial condition because we are assuming that the system is starting at t equal to t0 okay let's say that we have this so if the system is subjected to let's say a input u1 under the initial conditions x1 of t0 the output is y1 okay let's say u1 of t and with the initial condition x1 of t0 gives me a output y1 of t the same system when subjected to um, input ut u2 with the initial condition x2 of t0 gives me a output y2 of t okay now if the system satisfies two particular relationships with respect to the inputs and the output where we consider the initial conditions also as input but they are like not external inputs they are something that are due to the certain state of a system like if you consider a spring mass damper system so if a mass is basically the spring is stressed then that is the initial condition of the system that is a stressed spring with the mass at a particular distance from the origin under consideration okay so if the system is subjected to a initial condition which is of this form okay where alpha 1 and alpha 2 are real numbers so the initial condition is this it's a uh, uh, if you can see if you can observe it's a linear combination of the initial condition x1 at t0 and x2 at t0 okay under such initial condition let's say you scale up the input u1 t by a factor alpha 1 and the input u2 of t by a factor alpha 2 and let's say add them so you are taking a linear combination of the inputs as well with the same scalars as you had considered for the initial condition okay so you take this and you subject the system or give this combined input to the system let's say the output that you get is y of t okay so what we have for the same system u1 t with the initial input u1 t and the initial condition x1 t0 you have the output y1 t and similarly with 
input u to t under the initial condition x to t zero, you have the output y to t. Now, if you take a linear combination of the inputs with the same linear combination of the initial conditions, the system's output is y t. If or we can say the system is linear if and only if the output that you got because of the linear uh, input which was a linear combination of the individual inputs and the linear combination of individual initial conditions if that is equal to the linear combination of the individual outputs okay uh, sorry i'll write this a little clearer i didn't have space it's a linear combination of the individual outputs okay it's like if you subject the system to different inputs under different initial conditions uh, you get some outputs if you subject the same system with a linear combination of the inputs and the same linear combination of the initial conditions, you get another output. If this new output is equal to the linear combination of the individual outputs that you have got, then it is a linear system. Please note that in ev everywhere, the scalars associated with the linear combination is the same. Okay. So, let's say that suppose the system is at rest okay suppose the system is at rest this essentially means that initial conditions are zero suppose this is the case okay if you have u1 of t uh, let me write it like this where h denotes the system giving me y1 of t and u2 of t gives me y2 of t then a linear combination of both inputs if it is given as an input to the system, the output y of t that you get is essentially a linear combination of the individual outputs. Okay. In some books, you would also find this definition where the assumption is that if the system is at rest, okay. both are actually fine. Okay. So this is essentially the uh, the property that this linear system is satisfying is the superposition principle, right? One is additivity and one is homogeneity. If you add inputs, the output get added. If you scale up the input, the output also gets scaled by the same factor. Huh. Okay. So, in now, what you should notice is. We will discuss this in detail later, but what you should notice is the system H when subjected to an input UT under some initial condition XT0 gives me the output YT. Now this output is composed of a response due to the input and response due to the initial condition okay if the input is identically zero okay so this essentially means that ut is zero for all t greater than or equal to t for okay. the initial time. If this is true, 
then yt is only due to the initial conditions x of t0 and is and is known as the zero input response of the system if the initial condition is zero then yt is only due to the input ut and is known as the zero state response of the system we'll discuss this in detail for the linear systems now coming to time invariance let's say that we have the system which is subjected to the input ut and has the initial condition xt0 and gives me the output yt okay now let's say that i take the same system and consider a time instant which is let's say tau times after this initial time t0 okay so what essentially it means that here i was let's say triggering the system at t0 let's say this is the input that i am giving okay so this is u of t and this is t and at t0 the initial condition was x t0 and suppose the output turned out to be something like this this is at t0 this is yt and this is t let's say this is what you have now what i do is i consider the same system and instead of exciting the system at t equal to t0 what i now do is i excite the system let's say the input is u bar of t okay so i excite the system at or after so this is t0 so i excite the system at tau but what i maintain is unless i excite the system the initial condition of the uh, system is the same okay so i am assuming that xt0 and xt0 plus tau are the same so under these conditions i get some output let's say y bar of t okay so if you relate u bar and ut what you essentially get is u bar of t is nothing but a delayed version of ut delayed by a factor tau and also the initial condition for the second case is such that this holds so at t0 plus tau whatever initial condition you are considering it is the same as the initial condition that you considered at xt0 okay so this is what the scenario is so i get a output y y bar so we say that the system is time invariant if and only if 
the output y bar of t in this case is nothing but the time shifted version of the original output and the shift time is equal to now okay so what essentially it means that if you start a system now at this instant of time by giving it a certain input let's say that it is uh, a sinusoid sin t that is the input and you get a output y now if you start the same system under the same initial conditions after 1 hour not now after 1 hour and when you start the system with the same initial condition at after 1 hour from now and if you give the same input to the system then the output that you get is nothing but the delayed version of the output that you are getting now when you excited the system okay so the response of the system is not affected by the basically the characteristic of the response of the system is not affected by when you start the system until the input to which it is subjected and the uh, initial condition of the system remain the same just that whatever is the delay that you are experiencing in the output the same amount of delay gets reflected in the output so this is time invariance okay anything that is not time invariant is time varying similarly anything that is not linear would be not so here in this uh, part or the second module of the course where we discuss linear systems our discussions will be focused on linear time invariant systems basically systems which satisfy linearity and time invariance as well as linear time varying systems basically you satisfy linearity but do not satisfy time invariance so we'll see that there are properties uh, for linear time invariant systems which do not hold for linear time varying systems okay so in most cases we'll start with linear time varying systems and we'll specialize the properties to linear time invariant systems we'll stop here thank you